Hello, Ray Garner with Garner's Games. Here to give you my top five commons from Innistrad Crimson Vow. Uh, I know commons are a lot of times underrated by a lot of people. They're completely sometimes overlooked when people buy booster packs because they go straight to the rare, look at the rare, they're done with the pack. However, sometimes commons can make a huge difference in your gameplay. So these are the top five, and this is in the concept of standards. I mean, I'm not talking about sticking them in a vintage deck or nothing. Um, it can have a really good positive impact in your standard play. We're going to start off with this red card right here. This is going to be my number five, Bligilent Gus. It's a vampire. ties into a lot of vampire theme decks. Um, it's only a three casting cost. It's got Trample, 2-3, and of course, if it deals combat damage to a player, it creates a blood token. That's really good because there's a lot of blood token decks out there right now. An early Trample creature is really good in red, and basically free blood tokens for doing what you want to do anyway, which is damage your opponent. My number four is going to be this one right here. The Kindly Ancestor. It's a three casting cost lifelink, two, three. But, should it die, you can recast it from your graveyard, and it's an enchant creature, which gives lifelink, which, when you throw that onto one of your bigger, more powerful creatures, extremely useful. All right, my number three best common in this set, in my opinion. The beloved scorpion that brings forth the creature ability that everybody hates, Death Touch. The toxic scorpion has Death Touch. It's 1-1. One, one, costs 2 mana to cast. And when it enters the battlefield, it hands out Death Touch to somebody else. That's really cool. All right. My number two. Now, this one right here. I mean, this is a highly underestimated card. For only two... Mana, you can cast Vampire's Kiss, which is going to cost target player two life. It's going to gain you two life and create you two blood tokens. And considering how much blood token creation is needed in a lot of current decks, this is an amazing common card. Um, I would put it pretty much in every black deck I have because of the card advantage that blood tokens can give you. Uh, plus, life gain is always good, especially when it costs your opponent. And my number one common card from this set. This little artifact right here. Honored Heirloom is a three casting cost. Any mana. Uh, mana rock. Which, heck, that's good in Commander, of course. But on top of that, for just two mana tapping it, you can exile a target card from Graveyard, which can stop all kinds of return from the Graveyard effects that currently exist in this set. Um, I think it's a staple for anything resembling Mana Ramp and in almost any deck that you're playing. I really think you should play two of these because you are going to face opponents who are going to be trying to get cards out of their graveyard, and this can stop that from happening. That is why I think it is the number one card. It gives you mana, and it denies resources to your opponent. And mana resources and denying resources are two of the keys to winning almost any game in Magic. Uh, these are my opinions. Uh, I'm sure some people will disagree with them, but I do think those are the five best commons available in Crimson Vow. Appreciate y'all watching. Hope to see y'all at the tournaments.